G'day everyone, welcome to another Cyclone Chasers update tonight, the 19th of February 2013. Look, I'm going to keep this update uh, short, and I do apologise for that, but I am very tired of just finished training tonight, and so uh, we do have to keep it short, otherwise I may fall asleep. Alright, so let's get into it, because there's a lot of interesting things happening, particularly over WA, over the next week. We can see a clear increase in convective activity over the Arafura Sea and that's associated with a very weak low pressure system that has formed out here uh, well to the north of Darwin. That low pressure system will be the eventual large system or strong system that will hit the Pilbara or Kimberley coastline in the next 7 to 10 days. Now that system will push from here uh, towards the west or west southwest should dump a fair bit of rain over the western top end as it does that and will push out into this region intensify fairly rapidly out here in some very very warm sea surface temperatures and then approach the Pilbara or Kimberley coastline. Look we've got a fairly high degree of confidence we wouldn't normally tell you this unless we had a fairly high degree degree of confidence and we do have a high degree of confidence that this particular system will approach the coastline and uh, should impact the coastline directly as a tropical cyclone impact and at this stage look people we are looking at a higher end system category 3 plus it's just what day it hits and exactly what part of the coast it hits it's just too early to tell there's just too many variables still to play but what we can say get your cyclone kits ready Get them ready before the mass panic starts to happen early next week once uh, once word really gets out and the official word, uh, or sorry, the word becomes official next week. So if you live in the Pilbara and or the Kimberley, anywhere sort of broom southwards, get your cyclone kits ready. Go out and do your shopping uh, of your tinned foods, your batteries, your water. Go out and do that now so you do have to, you do avoid the rush next week. Further out to the west, we can see that there's also an increase in convective activity associated with a low that's uh, that's forming sort of to the south of Christmas Island. Now, that could actually become a tropical cyclone as well. So it's a bit of a race against time as to which one of these forms into a cyclone first. Um, and uh, whichever one forms into a cyclone will be called rusty, uh, whichever one forms first. So there's a little bit of a race against that. Look, this one here, out here, is not expected to come back towards the coast. Really the emphasis is on this particular system. If we look over towards Queensland, Queensland's had a pretty active time of it too. In the southeast, we've got a low pressure system off the coast. Um, and it's causing a fair bit of rain, storm and, and shower activity as well as some gales and gusty winds. But look, it's not a tropical cyclone, it's not a tropical low. It's all associated with an upper level low feature here over eastern or, or, or central Queensland. Um, and look, we're not going to cover that in any more detail. For more information on that, check out our partners Higgins Storm Chasing and South Brisbane Storms. They'll give you a lot more information on that one. Courtesy of weather zone, we really need to take a look at this. Is this is the sea surface temperature anomalies out here in the southeast Indian Ocean off the Kimberley coastline, off the Pilbara coastline. Look, folks, this water out here is just like an absolute sauna. Uh, not only is it quite warm normally at this time of year, but it's up to two, maybe even two and a half degrees uh, warmer than it would normally be expected to be. Now, we'd normally expect sea surface temperatures here to be 28 to 30 degrees. These sea surface temperatures are 30 plus degrees Celsius. That is just an amazing amount of energy, a tremendous amount of energy ready to explode into the atmosphere given the right surface conditions. That's why we expect explosive development of this tropical low as it pushes out into this area. We've got really warm sea surface temperatures. Vertical wind shear looks like it's not going to be an issue at all, uh, and that's a really, really key factor. And we're also looking at a large amount of moisture in the atmosphere as well, associated with a monsoon trough. So really, folks, this is all systems go. Everything's going to be working in its favour. If this doesn't make severe cat Category 3 or, or more, um, I, I, I'd be very, very surprised. Interesting for future reference because after the after the Western Australian system, as we mentioned last night, we are looking at the Gulf of Carpentaria, very warm waters in the Gulf as well, and then in the longer term we're looking at the Coral Sea, warm waters in the Coral Sea too. So anything that's uh, yellow or anything that's white even is is warm is what we'd expect. Anything that's yellow is warmer than normal. Anything that's getting into the dark reds is extremely warm. Um, but look. It, 
all parts of northern Australia are now ready to fire in terms of sea surface temperatures. So not an issue. A lot of potential uh, available potential energy there for the atmosphere to tap into uh, should the conditions be right. So WA first, big one here in WA, and then we're starting to talk the Gulf and the Western Coral Sea. Okay, so let's take a look at the next couple of weeks, MJO-wise. Look, it's all already into Australia now, so we're not very far away from seeing a monsoon trough hitting the coastline. Uh, it's very, very close and now, uh, probably a couple of days at the most. Look, it's going to weaken very dramatically, the MJO, but it's going to remain in the region and then re-strengthen as it heads into early March straight back into the Australian region. So we are looking at a considerable period of of increased rainfall chances, increased cyclone chances uh, over the entire part of northern Australia. Maybe not so much in the Coral Sea until probably the second week of March, but uh, up until that, uh, high percentage chances of not just this one in WA, more cyclones developing in the Gulf, and maybe another one over the top end or WA again, um, and also later on in the forecast period, uh, in, the, in the monthly forecast period, certainly the Coral Sea looking quite active as well. So look folks, it's a very, very active situation coming up. Let's have a look at some specific, uh, specific model prognostics on the Western Australian cyclone at this very early stage. Now look folks, before I show you this, can I please caution you, these are very, very preliminary looks at early model guidance, a lot of errors still involved in it, but we will show you them uh, just to show that there is still very good model agreement despite the fact that it's still so far away before this thing actually happens. Very good model agreement. Look, if we had the funds this year, we would certainly be chasing this particular setup. So folks, this is the latest in the Canadian uh, CMC model and this Canadian model has the system developing in 36 hours in the Tiwi Islands, pushing south right into Darwin. Look, as I say, the western top end, don't be surprised if you cop a fair bit of heavy rain as this system is firstly developing. Um, now this model is developing it on the 21st pushing it towards the uh, southwest on the 22nd, very close to the North Kimberley coast, developing it in, into a tropical cyclone here on the 24th, pushing it almost directly south near Derby, uh, and then hitting the coast or, or grazing the coast all the way through to about Broome as a Cat 1, Cat 2. So that's the CMC model's interpretation. On the 25th, it has a system actually hitting the coast near Broome. If we take a look at the UK Met, the UK Met has it developing on the 20th of, uh, Jan of February, right basically over the top of Darwin, really forms it right over the top of Darwin. As I said, don't be surprised if you cop a little bit of heavy rain uh, over, that, over that very, very short period while the, while the low is in that region. Pushes it to the west, develops it reasonably rapidly once it stalls it. So on the 23rd, it stalls the system and allows it to, or creates an outflow channel. Uh, and so what that does is at the top of the system, it allows all of the uh, excess, or all of the tops of the tops of the thunderstorm clouds to escape out to the northwest. And because of that increased outflow uh, to the south of it, it will allow the system to deepen and develop very rapidly. And you can see here as the system deepens, or sorry, slows towards the west and starts to push in a south or southwest direction, it actually deepens these color coding, suggesting that it's down to about 980 to 990 hectopascals here on the 25th off the coast of Derby and moving in a south, south, southwest or southwest direction. So it has it reasonably close to the coast and, and because it's got it so close to the coast, it limits the potential for the cyclone to uh, further develop. But look, that's a dubious forecast still. We expect it to be just a little bit further offshore than that. Now, if it can get a little bit further offshore, conditions are even better for its further development. And we should see rapid intensification, especially as it starts to approach or make its final approach towards the south or southeast, uh, towards the Pilbara coastline, as opposed to the Kimberley. Look, if it hits the Kimberley coastline, it's not going to hit as a very, very significant system. If it hits the Pilbara coastline, it's likely to hit as a very very significant system. At this stage, we are tipping a Pilbara crossing as opposed to the two models I've shown you so far, which suggest that it's approaching the Kimberley coastline. 
So the next model we'll have a look at is the GFS model and the GFS model we're looking at here is surface wind speeds. So these are the wind speeds on the ground and these are the numbers in knots here. So you can see once we get into the reds we're starting to talk 40 knots plus. Once we get into the purples we're starting to talk really destructive winds. And at the moment we're starting at Friday at, uh, sorry Saturday at 4am Queensland time and we're going to continue to Saturday at 10 a.m. Queensland time. You can start to see that the, that the low pressure system consolidates, possibly even forming into a cyclone by Saturday morning. Look, at this stage, the, one of the key things with this model that you do need to realize is while it's quite accurate at showing us where a cyclone can go, uh, it's not very accurate at picking up the start of the cyclone. So it tries to push the start very, very, very rapidly, uh, a little bit more rapidly than we would expect in real life. So just because it's saying that by Saturday morning it is a cyclone don't take that for gospel it's likely to take another day or so to really crank up all right so as we head towards Saturday night we can see that the system is on the charge to the southwest hasn't really intensified too much still looking at 35 to 40 knots uh, 35 to 40 knot winds here um, as we head towards Sunday morning we can start to see the system really rapidly intensifying. Remember, as I said, once it, start, once it starts to stall or once it slows down its, its southwest movement, it starts to develop an outflow channel. That outflow channel will assist in intensifying the system pretty rapidly. Let's head towards Sunday night and have a look what it does. You can see here the system stalls. By Monday morning, you can see that the system is continuing now to track in a more southerly direction, still quite slow in its movement. As we head towards Monday night, we see the system here over the, uh, still continuing to push in a south or south-southwest direction. As we head towards Tuesday morning, you can see just the system's really, really slow movement. It starts to adopt a more easterly movement on Tuesday, and as we head towards Tuesday night, it really starts to take a rapid or a more rapid approach to the southeast towards the coast as it starts to get impacted by what we call an upper level trough. And sorry, I'll just fast forward a little bit too far there. On Wednesday afternoon, the 27th, is when this particular model is suggesting that this system is hitting the coast. And if we zoom into the actual area that it's hitting, luckily it's it's decided to hit the uh, hidden area uh, less populated than Broome, but you can see here Broome is in, in a very, very close to the maximum winds of the system. You can see here system winds of 75 knots at the surface, which is just phenomenal winds. We're talking a Cat 3 plus system here, folks, as it hits the coast on Wednesday. Now, it's important when we look at this that we don't just look at one model run, um, that we look at it over a period of time. Now, if we looked at the previous model run, the previous model run had the system at the same time frame um, a little bit further to the south and seeing that it actually hits the coast a lot further to the south, in fact, closer to Port Hedland or Pardue. So we do need to take uh, this sort of prediction this far out with a grain of salt. Okay, okay, last but certainly not least is the European projection. And the European, as you know, is the most accurate model in the world and we do need to focus on it a lot more than the others. So <clears throat> looking at this, we've got a 990 hectopascal uh, Cat 1 cyclone next Tuesday. Um, we see that rapidly develop and, and intensify though by next Wednesday. And look at this, next Wednesday it pushes to the, towards the south, becomes around about 970 hectopascal Cat 2 or 3 system at this point in time. So it's really intensified a lot over that 24 hour period. Now bear in mind that at this early stage uh, models always tend to underestimate intensities. So being seven days out, so this is next, uh, sorry this is now eight days out next Wednesday, uh, it's a long way away and so the models will tend to underestimate the intensity here. So a Cat 3 on this model is showing a significant tropical cyclone in the real world at this time. And looking at this, just look at this massive, massively uh, strong system that ends up nailing the coast. And you can see here, uh, unfortunately we can't show you in between because that's a subscription only service. But what we can show you is how it pushes in from here to here. And if you look at, if you look at actually moving that in a straight line, I know cyclones don't move in a straight line, but if you look at that in a straight line, you can find out exactly where the system is expected to impact according to the euro. 
I've just drawn that line in there for you to see the trajectory as the system approaches landfall and if you need to uh, you can you can sort of make out exactly the point of approach at, at what point it hits now look if you're anywhere inside this white area you're in some really really destructive winds people so look this system even inland now crossing the coast sort of six to twelve hours before this point uh, that you're seeing on your maps still has this system as a significant category three or four tropical cyclone this far inland so you can just imagine how strong it is as it hits the coast look folks this is a serious system take it seriously it's not a tropical cyclone peter which is the little cat one that that hit little fun cyclone that hit the coast earlier this is going to be a significant cyclone and it is likely to impact the coastline so take your take all the necessary precautions now and uh, we'll talk again in a couple of days time on the thursday evening uh, we'll have a, hopefully be able to narrow things down a bit for you in terms of where it's hitting and hopefully some of those other models that are suggesting the kimberley north kimberley crossing uh, will start to come more into line with the two major models the gfs and the european who are showing a pilbara crossing of a significant tropical cyclone Thanks for watching tonight, folks. Uh, take care and make sure you get those preparations done. And we'll talk again Thursday night.